Hi friends, welcome to today's all levels yoga class, about 45 minutes. This month, we're focusing on homecoming. I recently heard another yoga teacher explain that the yoga mat can be like a little island. Anytime that you roll out the mat and stand on the mat, it becomes home. So in this month, when so many folks will again reach out, travel, get on airplanes, trains, cars, buses, all of the things, and go somewhere else, you can still roll up your yoga mat, bring it with you, and have a little piece of home. Um, it's one thing that I love about the virtual yoga experience is that we don't have to take away all of our routines. We can keep the routines even when we're in different places. So I hope you enjoy today's class. Please take a comfortable seat. Close your eyes. Draw your attention, your awareness to body, to breath, to your home on your yoga mat. And I offer you this quote from Gladys Hunt. What is home? My favorite definition is a safe place, a place where one is free from attack, a place where one experiences secure relationships and affirmation. It's a place where people share and understand each other. Its relationships are nurturing. The people in it do not need to be perfect. Instead, they need to be honest, loving, supportive, recognizing a common humanity that makes all of us vulnerable. One more breath here. Let it go. You're safe. You are home. Tuck the chin down to the chest and gently rock from side to side. It can be very slow or a little quicker. However feels good. Keep the right ear over towards the right shoulder. Walk the fingertips out to the side. Place the right hand on top of the left ear. A little lengthening tug out to the side. No pressure down, just lengthen. Bring the hands back to the thighs, chin to chest, left ear to left shoulder. All of you know the start. We start this way so often for the precise purpose of allowing ourselves knowledge, acceptance, repetition. Here is the safe space, the safe home. I hope it sends the signal to the body, nervous system. Ah, I can be held here. No more fight or flight. Release. Keep the chin down to the chest now. Take the hands behind the head and give the little press of the head up into the hands. Feel the slight stretch from the top of the spine down to the tailbone. Engage in the abdomen, navel back towards the spine. Strengthen there. And then release. Lift the head, open the eyes. OK. 
Okay, come on over to all fours. Let's continue with this movement that we know so well, cat and cow. And yet, though we know cat and cow, at least to me, what makes it interesting is checking in to see how the body responds today. There's always something a little bit different when I really pay attention. What do you think? Downward facing dog. Take the hands a little more out in front. Tuck the toes. Lift the hips up and back. Oh, here in downward facing dog, pedal out the feet. And then settle in. A little bit more stillness in the outer form. Still that movement and experience inside with the breath. Next, inhale, come forward to plank position. Shoulders right over the back of the wrist, pull the heels in, squeeze the glutes, lengthen the tailbone, tone the abdomen, look a little forward rather than down. When I'm home, I know my general routines, schedules, the places where I feel comfortable. Lower flat down to the belly, and yet there's always challenge. There's always a little stress and difference that comes in every day. That tension that can be a really good thing as well. Inhale, lift up, belly down, back bend. Shalabhasana. That's what we're exploring on the mat here. Lots of things we know, sometimes in different ways, different combinations. Here in child's pose, stay for a few breaths. Here's a little different challenge. From child's pose, look forward, look at your hands. With the littlest amount of lift you can do in the, in the belly, in the uh, butt, tuck the toes. So rather than coming all the way to all fours to make it happen, stay back. Keep looking at your hands. Now can you press your hands more down and forward and through that excitement, hover the knees up, hover, 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 and then lift all the way to downward facing dog. Never coming through all fours, keeping the arms uh, shoulders, I should say, way back, away from the line of the wrist. We get to the same place, but from a different way. Stay here, breathe here. Okay, pull your right knee up towards your nose, then change to, uh, to plank position. Sorry, getting my words all mixed up. Change to plank position with that knee curled into the chest and step the foot through to your low lunge. Something we do all the time, just really breaking it down there. From the low lunge, let's get into a groove. Right hand high. On the exhale, wrap it underneath your leg. Inhale, lift it up to the sky. Exhale, wrap it underneath the leg. One more time, inhale to the sky. This time, hand to the inside of the leg and wrap it underneath. Fly, both hands up. Unwrap, change it all the way back, downward facing dog. Cool? So again, on the second side, we're gonna slow it down. Pull the left knee into the chest. Try to touch nose to knee. Then change towards plank. Hold it there. 
think cat back and now step it through. In the low lunge, we speed it up, go into a flow, lift the left arm high. From the outside, wrap underneath the leg, inhale high. Exhale, still on the outside, wrap underneath. This is where it changes, inhale, lift up. Okay, arm comes to the inside of your leg, wrap under like airplane wings. Try to take both hands up, give it a breath. And then unwrap, hands back down, step back, downward facing dog. Cool. Little bend in the knees, walk your hands all the way back to your feet. Roll it up to standing, roll, roll, roll. Roll the shoulders up, back, and down a couple of times. Start to walk towards the front of the mat. Roll your shoulders forward and down. Mountain pose, Tadasana. How do you wish to begin here? You think back how many times, even just in the past year, you've come to this base of home on your yoga mat, to this position. Each time representing that journey, Tadasana to Tadasana to Tadasana. Okay. Inhale, lift the arms up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. <coughs> Excuse me. Inhale, half lift. Step back to plank. Lower flat down to the mat. Cobra. Downward facing dog. Breathe here. So we're gliding through. Sun salutation A, Surya Namaskar A. Look in between your hands, step or jump to the front end of the mat, half lift, forward fold. Inhale, stand up, reach the arms up to the sky, palms together, center of the chest. Do it all over again, lift up. Fold over, half lift, step back to plank. With control, lower down to the mat. You can only use knees or toes. Curl up, little baby cobra, maybe a little higher, a little higher. Find the cobra that feels good right now. Downward facing dog, switch it up. Look in between your hands, step, jump, walk, front of the mat, half lift, forward fold, stand, reach the arms to the sky, palms together, center of the chest. One more time for good measure here. You know the movement, the breath pattern. Can you do one thing a little bit differently? Maybe you try a jump. This time, as you end the pose, if you always are on toes, give yourself the opportunity to come to knees here to lower down. See how it fits you. Do the routine, but with one thing a little different. Hold downward facing dog. Maybe it's a tiny difference, like feet just a little bit wider right here than you would typically take. Look forward to the hands. Step all the way to the front of the mat. Half lift. Forward fold. Stand up, reach the arms to the sky. Take palms together, center of the chest. Pause. 
Draw back inward to the intention, to that reason that brought you to the mat. Let your eyes pop back open. Take the hands to the waist here. Staying at the front of the mat, lift the right knee up and into the chest. So we're gonna kick the foot forward into a lift. Ooh, that's feeling kind of hard to me today, so I'm gonna hold under my thigh and give a little extra lift of the leg and allow the knee to stay somewhat Bent. So find your way in this elevated position. Change it up. Kick the right foot back behind you and then hinge forward. Where's your warrior three here? Arms stay at the waist or go forward. Introduce the two things. We're gonna go back and forth with it two times. Kick forward now, and then back. Kick forward, and back. High lunge, drop the right foot down to the floor. Come into a high lunge, torso straight up and down, arms to the sky. As, the, as you lift the arms overhead, place the palms together. Now that can be with a nice bend in the elbows here to start with. Cross your thumbs, reacquaint both hips face the front of the mat, push through the back heel, extend through the front knee, Okay, all of that nice and strong. Belly button in towards the spine. Stretch your arms as straight as they'll go now. Up, up, up. One more breath. Lower the hands either side of the front foot. Step both feet to the front of the mat. Uttanasana as you're standing forward fold. Something familiar. Standing forward fold, make all 10 fingers touch the ground and make the legs as straight as they'll go. Change it up, both hands go to the waist, point the elbows to the sky, push down into your feet and come on up. Remember back to the beginning of that quote, the first thing she said is home is a safe place. So as we come into the second side here, left knee up into the chest. I'm just gonna switch around my direction, but you can stay as you are. Left knee up into the chest. What feels safest here? Do you wanna give your hip flexor a little bit of a break? Hold underneath your leg so that you have a safer way to stay. Feel at home in the pose. And then we change to warrior three. Kick back behind you. Engage the glute. Now, as much as the leg lifts, the torso tilts downward. If the leg stays lower, the torso stays higher. Yeah? Find your way. Warrior three. Hands safely at the waist or out in front. Okay, and then after seeing the two things, it's easier to put them together. Kick forward and kick back. One more time, kick forward and kick back. Set the left toes down to the mat. Work into a high lunge, so squish, squash. <laughs> Very technical, the back foot further back until the torso can again come upright. Hips, shoulders, ears, all stacked. Lift both arms up to the sky. 
Remember here to evenly stretch in both directions. Imagine the right knee going more forward, the left heel going further back. And then take palms together, cross at the thumbs. That big bend in the elbows so that you find the position at first. Stay steady in the legs, steady in the core, and then stretch out. Arms as straight as they'll go up towards the sky. Keep looking straight ahead, straight ahead. Breathe in. Nicely done. Lower the hands down either side of the front foot. And step it forward, both feet to the front end. Again, of your mat, standing forward, fold. Uttanasana. This time, try bending the knees now in Uttanasana and taking that ragdoll position. Hold on to the elbows, be heavier in the upper body. Let yourself hang. And roll up to standing, slow roll to standing. Shoulders up, back and down a couple of times. And forward and down. Okay, from here, a couple more standing postures that you're quite familiar with. Use the long edge of your yoga mat and take a wide stance. Triangle pose. I'm going to use my leg, but you could also use a yoga block or just touch the fingertips to the ground. Turn your right toes out and extend both arms in either direction. Now keep the arms, the legs as straight as they are right now throughout the whole pose. Look out over the right fingertips. Hinge, push the hips one way, torso the other way. And then change the arms. Right arm down, it catches the leg, yoga block, or the ground, and top arm to the sky. You know this, you can look down, that creates, at least for me, a lot more stability and balance. If that's at all a worry for you, just stay looking down, stay steady for yourself. A little more challenge, look to the side. And then to me, the benefit of looking all the way up is that no matter what, I know that my top shoulder tends to float a little down and forward unless I turn head to look up. And then I can kind of see and I can feel, okay. Open, feels a little bit more vulnerable, but I'm here, I'm working. I also know it's the home base that I know well of Trikonasana, triangle pose. And before I come back up, look down, stand upright, and switch to the second side. Change your feet. Back toes can turn in just a little bit to help with the directionality. Front toes all the way out. Again, arms out in either direction. Gaze out over the left fingertips. The whole body, of course, connected. So as you push your hips back, torso goes the other way. And then you've finished the pose. You just need to change the arms. Left hand down. Find your shin. Find the floor, find your yoga block, top arm up to the sky. And again, to make it most comfortable to look down, that top shoulder, top hip is probably gonna turn a little down and forward. Nothing wrong with that. As you change your gaze to the side, it can open with a little bit more ease. If you change your gaze all the way to look up, yes, there's a lot more balance and control necessary does it still work for you and then that top shoulder top hip can open back we're talking like inches difference probably here always checking in what feels best today come on upright 
Take the hands to the waist, turn the feet parallel to one another, wide-legged forward fold. Here's my little trick. Scoot yourself up so that the toes are almost hanging off the very front end of your mat. Mm -hmm. And then as you hinge forward, again, hips go one direction, torso goes the other direction. Drop the hands down and try placing the fingertips along that same edge. So then you've got one line, toes, hand, hand, toes. Nice long spine. Keep the spine as long as possible and imagine setting the head down at the very same line as well. I say imagine, because that's a super hard thing to do. Maybe if a couple of you get there, it's not really what's necessary. But we know where we're working. Alignment is a great guideline. It's like the routines of being home, but keeping some of the guidelines, the boundaries can make us feel safer. Perhaps because I feel safer, more honest with myself and others. Stay in this wide-legged forward fold, Prasarada Padatanasana, with the weight more forward into the toes. Nice long exhale. Slowly come out of this pose, first by looking forward, long spine. I like to turn out the toes, bend the knees, and just kind of slowly crawl up, elbows to knees, hands to thighs, and then up. Heel toe it in. Shake things out. One more time, come to the top of your mat. Stand in Tadasana. Again, taking in Tadasana to Tadasana. The practice from last week, last month, last year, feeding in to what we know of home today. Inhale, lift the arms up to the sky. Forward fold. Keep your right foot forward, step the left foot back. In the effort to continue to do things that we know, but maybe with a little bit of a switch up, not that we've never done this, but it's not the most typical way to get into pigeon pose. I want you to try to go palms flat on the ground here. And I know that in and of itself is a big ask. So if you can get the body against your thigh enough to get your palms flat on the ground, go there. And then we're gonna try to move into pigeon pose from here. So I know not to sink the hips down and forward here, but if I lift them up higher, I'm gonna have a little bit more space to work with. Drag your right foot back until it can come knee to chest off of the ground. Hold, hold there. From that place and show of strength, slowly lower. Right knee down towards the right wrist, left knee to the ground. Walk the left leg back, keep the torso upright. So the hands have to walk back, keep the torso upright. Notice that my hips are not on the ground here. Instead, I'm focusing on keeping torso upright and hips aligned, parallel <laughs> to each other. You have enough to take the arms up to the sky. And if that's working, take that big bend in the elbows, palms together, wrap the thumbs, and reach up. Lower the hands down. Sleeping pigeon, now you get to come down to the forearms. Probably walk the left leg a little further back. I bet your hips can sit a little heavier to the ground here and stay 
square with one another. Soften, breathe. Allow your hips to shift way over towards the right side. As you do that, pull the back knee closer to the right foot. Torso goes back up, right hand behind your back, lift your hips. I like to think of an ocean wave here, left arm across and over. I think some call this mermaid pose, it's got a few different names. Good stretch through the front of the hips after opening up through the outside of the hips. As you come down here, swing the left foot around. We've still got a little more in this combo. Left foot goes around to the outside of the right knee. If you're like me, I'm way over on the right side here. The only way to get me balanced out, I've got to swing my bottom leg out, and then I can come back on top of both sides of my butt. Tall. We're gonna do a little bit of a flow with this twist. So twist and look over your back shoulder and then counter twist around. Do it twice more like that. Twist and look over the back shoulder and exhale open. And of course we're flowing both ways. So if you're going the opposing direction, no big deal because we're all doing both. This time as you come back to your center, both legs go straight and we're simply going to switch it all around to stand up. Find Tadasana. Ready? Inhale, lift up. Exhale, forward fold. Keep the left foot forward, step your right foot back. Good, so stay there. It should be your second side. And again, can you try to go palms flat down? I'll shift my chest kind of to the inside and get my armpit more so in the side of the torso rather than belly so that it gives you a little bit more space to get that outer hand flat. Okay, and then instead of letting our hips drop down and forward, we've got to lift up and back. Create the space to be able to drag your left foot back off of the mat, knee into the chest, hover and hold. And here's where you slowly lower left knee down behind the left wrist, heel closer to the right hip. All right, we're going upright in the torso. So as you walk your hands back, walk the right knee back. Again, not so worried about whether the hips can go down to the ground. Instead, do try to keep the alignment of hips square so you can equally press down through the legs easy enough to lift the arms up. Bend the elbows, cross the thumbs. So that cross of the thumbs should just give a little bit more power. That's what we're looking for. And then stretch. Working towards the shape. Ekapadaraja kapapatasana. Prep. Lower the hands down. Tilt the torso forward, which makes the hips go back. Come all the way down to the forearms, probably a little more room to scoot the back leg a little further back and still keep the hips square. So when uh, we say pigeon pose, if we look all the way back to where that pose originated, 
I mentioned the Sanskrit, Ekaparaja Kapapatasana. One legged king pigeon pose. It does ask for the hands to go up and bend at the elbows and catch back the tail of your back foot. It's a huge back bending posture. We're usually using the legs portion, like right now, sleepy pigeon, to think of it as a hip opener. Let yourself fall over towards the left hip. Bring the back knee in close to the front foot. Left hand takes some weight as you lift the hips up, press through. Right arm wave up and over, big ocean wave. Lower it back down. Slide the right foot again around. Cross it all the way over. All right, if this works for you with both legs tucked underneath, you've got both sides of your butt on the ground here, you can keep that bottom leg tucked under. To make it a little bit more doable though, extend the leg out and then you can roll the sit down on either side. Okay, the twist moves first towards the leg. I said back shoulders, maybe thinking which one's the back? Towards into the thigh for the inhale and then the exhale away from the thigh. Open belly twist, closed belly twist. And open, one more time, close. And open. Extend both legs straight out in front of you, forward fold. Stay in that seated forward fold a little bit longer. Be good to yourself here. The epitome of turning in, literally folding the head into the body. Truly we can keep that safe space of home wherever we are, because it's right here inside. And then come all the way back upright. We're gonna lie down on the back. We'll stay down for the rest of this practice. Face either way that feels best for you. And then as you lie back, hug your knees into your chest. When I first hug, I usually have a lot of space. And then try to give yourself a stronger squeeze. Bring the knees really close in. Wrap maybe even elbows, forearms, all the way around the front of the shins. Hug in tight. Oh, a little too tight. <laughs> and then release. Notice the differences there. Take it to happy baby. Knees wide. Flex the feet up to the sky. I don't always love this position. If you're in a space where it doesn't feel right, just keep hugging the knees into the chest. Drop both knees over towards the right side. Let the arms just release out in either direction. Allowing the way that you place the body and release into the posture. To be one signal to release and relax. Lengthen out your breath, especially on the exhale as another signal to release and relax.
The breath has a really wonderful quality when we give it awareness and attention to be able to down-regulate, to bring us into a calm, safe home space. Use it here. Drop the knees over to the other side. Try not to effort here, just let it be. Bring the knees back into the middle. Another good hug. Friends, if there's any last little bit of movement that would feel nice to you, please add it in here. I'm going to take my legs up, imagining that I have a wall behind the legs. For legs up the wall, it takes a little bit more intent but here just simply lifting the legs up is going to give us the benefits of a deeper inversion but without the strain or tension if you do prefer shoulder stand you can do that here. If you prefer no inversion, of course, keep your feet low. And now relax out to a still position. Stay lying on your back. You could roll to your side or come all the way up to a seat. As you find your stillness, count your fingers, count your toes. And then release even more. You are home. Your little island. Safe, held. Come back here as much as you what need
as ready, come back. Little movement, <clears throat> fingers, toes, stretch it out. Move back to a comfortable seat. Gather the goodness of this space, palms together, thumbs to the sternum. As a way of allowing this space, this feeling to expand into the next moments, into the fullness of your day. We'll close in the chant of Om. You're welcome to sing along, to listen, or to tune it out. Empty your breath, deep breath in. Ah, oh. Full gratitude to you, each other, this practice. Namaste.